Good afternoon, my name is Tracy Drake and I'm a graduate student at Liberty University pursuing my PhD in history. Originally, I was curious about when and how the political parties switched platforms, so I began researching when and how this occurred. In my research, I came across the election of 1896 and William Jennings Bryan. Research showed that this election was history altering. William Jennings Bryan was said to be the Trump before the Trump. And given this controversy, this interested me. A picture of how William Jennings Bryan filled a room with his infamous speeches was uncovered. Additionally, I was able to construct the policies that Bryan stood for in government. My key research question was, why did William Jennings Bryan and other turn of the century Democrats advocate for big government? After presenting the question to my professor, it was suggested that I narrow my question a bit, something that I struggle with. I decided then to add Southern Democrats to my question, creating why did William Jennings Bryan and other turn of the century Southern Democrats advocate for big government? This helped me to narrow in on the voter base during 1896. Additionally, this additive allowed me to get a clearer picture of the political climate of 1896. My research revealed that the voter population underwent a change during that election of 1896. In my research, I was able to glean many primary resources, as Brian was a popular fellow in his time. In some of my primary resources, research showed what a great orator Brian proved to be, which earned him his Democratic nomination. In a letter from Brian to the Honorary William B. Allen Chairman and others, members of the Notification Committee of the People's Party, Brian accepted the party's nomination. While Brian acknowledged members of the Democratic and Republican parties having supported free coinage of silver, he thanked the People's Party of their unwavering support of bimetallism. Brian pointed out that America was being operated by only a few financers, J.P. Morgan and J.D. Rockefeller. In another primary source, some material culture, I was able to learn about Brian's home in Lincoln, Nebraska, where he lived from 1902 to 1921. The landmark source described the features of his home and it offered photographs of his home as it was then. The home has been preserved and now serves as a historic site as a National Historic Landmark of 1963. His home, Fairview, which he dubbed Monticello of the West, was the gathering place for much of Brian's public and private activities. Now a suburban block, he deeded his home and the surrounding grounds to the Nebraska Methodist Conference as a site for hospital. One other primary source explained correspondence between Brian, Wilson, Garrison, and Daniels. The telegram was sent to Wilson from Brian, updating him on the situations between the United States and the seizure of the ship, the Eparanga. Bryant informs Wilson that to prevent ammunition from reaching Curita, they would need to seize Veracruz's custom house and then impound the ammunition. Bryant felt that this could be done without fighting or capturing of the entire city. The evidence showed that Bryan was in support of big government operations. Evidence revealed that Bryan believed that the government's assistance was necessary, necessary to restore relief to the common man. Brian advocated for the government's intervention in order to help the common man. But to Brian's detriment, he included his position on religion and was said to divide the people. Furthermore, research showed that in spite of Brian's common man's agenda, ultimately the public was divided over the two parties. His opponent, William McKinley, won the admiration of the people with his agenda and with his character. After my research, my personal question, not my research question, remained. When and how did the two parties swap platforms? My personal perception of the two parties is that Democrats typically stand for big government, which is who Brian stood with. And my research pointed out that Brian, a Democrat, wanted big government initiatives. However, when my research took me to the election of 1896, it explained that it was the election that changed the course of history. The main change that I could find was that Brian changed how campaigning was done. It also showed the turn that history took without the coinage of silver. Furthermore, to support this being a time of shift, history was already in an altering state due to industrialization. So, 
For me, I would like to research what were the history altering developments during the election of 1896. Thank you for listening to my blog and have a great day.